All right, everyone. So this is going to be a very important tutorial here. What I want to do is I want to spend some time showing you my review process. And in specific here, in particular, I want to look at the preliminary review phase of doing a client tax return. So what we have here is we have Jason and Amanda, and they're a couple. They have a couple of kids, and we do their tax return on an annual basis. So assume this is one of your clients that you do a tax return for annually. Now, what I've done is I've gone through, for example, putting together the tax package, sorting all the slips, as I've suggested. And what we've done is we've input all the slips into the tax return. Now, some tax preparers might just say, hey, you know what? The tax return is finished here because I've input all the information that the client gave us. And, well, that's just it. Tax return's done. Let's print it up, get them in to sign it, file it, and we get paid, right? Well, not so fast. There is a lot of additional work to be done, and this is where you separate the accountants, let's just say, and the really effective tax preparers versus just the data entry clerks or the ones that just want to input data and get paid. Now, as you can see here, I'm on Amanda's tax return. So this is uh, the wife. And what we've done is we've entered all the slips. So here, if I go through and I click through the actual tax return itself, you can see that, for example, Amanda makes 98,500. They have some taxable dividends here. Uh, she's got her personal credit, the CPP and EI tax credits, the employment amount. If we slip over to Jason, you'll see that he has his job here. So he's got some dividend income and some other credits here as well related to the children and the children's fitness amounts. Let's look at this closer and see what we can get from this information and if we're missing anything. Now, the first thing I'll do is let's just go over to Amanda's here and I'll compare it to last year and I'll say, well, you know what? What happened here? Last year, Amanda had taxable dividends of 1872 She had interest income of 612 You know, this year it only seems like it's only a portion of that. So what happened? Why is it lower this year? Also last year, there was taxable capital gains of almost $5,000. So this year there's nothing. So I'll take note and I'll say, listen, why is your dividend income lower this year, your interest income? Did you have any capital gains this year, capital losses? So just from scanning over the comparative, I can already tell there might be some information missing or some information I might need to gather from the client that will provide us with some other reporting requirements. Let's go over to Jason. Well, actually, if we stick to Amanda here, let's go over to her tax credit side. And we'll see, okay, the personal amount is there, the CPPEI credit is there, that's right from the T4. The employment amount is right from the T4. Oh, wait a second. Last year, Amanda had a public transit pass credit. We didn't have any uh, passes in the uh, file this year. We didn't have any, uh, you know, TTC passes or public transit passes. So again, take down the note and ask Amanda or Jason if there was any of these expenses this year. If we go over to Jason's side, well, we'll see the same thing here because it looks like Amanda and Jason split their investment income 50-50. So same applies to Jason's dividend income and interest income and the capital gains as well. But wait a second here. Look at line 117. Last year, Jason, because he was the lower earner, had $2,400 UCCB, whereas this year, he didn't have the UCCB. So that tells me right off the bat that he's missing that RC62 form. So that's going to be on the list of questions for the client. You can also look on the dependent sheet to make sure that they are still of age. And as you can see here, when I scroll over the date of birth for the kids, the tax program actually tells us you should be expecting an RC62. So you might want to look into that. So as you can see here, it gives us a warning, which is great for the tax software. So there we go. There's another question. And last year, there was also the children's art amount for $500, which we don't have this year. We do have the children's fitness amounts, which is the maximum for this year. So it looks like we're okay there. But we might be missing some art credits. Maybe there was some music lessons or some ballet lessons or arts camp, for example. Maybe we made a mistake and put everything in on one line. So once again, that's a note on the file that we need to take care of. If we scroll down to Jason here as well, we'll see that last year he made 
RRSP contributions of $3,600, whereas this year there was nothing. So if I know my client well, I'll think, hey, you know what? I know Jason makes $300 a month of RRSP contributions. I didn't see the slip. So I'm going to ask Jason if he made that contribution and if he did to send us the slip. Again, childcare expenses here seems a lot lower than last year. So I might want to review the receipts. And if we only have the receipts for the 4236 well, you know what? That's another question to ask Jason or Amanda. Did they spend less on childcare expenses this year? Maybe that's all they spent, or maybe they forgot to give us the receipt for, you know, one of the uh, child care providers. Again, you know, the clients are not perfect. They're not really going to give you a file that's 100% complete with all the slips and all the information when they first come to you. Some clients are great. Some clients will give you everything you need. Others might forget things. They might misplace a slip. They might have thrown it out because they might not know it's a tax slip. So importantly the first step of the review process is comparing to last year when you compare a client's tax return to the previous years you will get 90 to 95 percent of the information you're missing just by looking at the comparative and the reason for that is most family situation or taxpayer situation don't change drastically from year to year so in this example, I might call up Jason or Amanda and ask them the questions and they might say, oh yeah, Ian, you know what? I forgot to give you the T5 from our new investment advisor over at Investors Group. You only have our uh, the, the T slips from our previous advisor over at CIBC. I'm going to phone up my investment advisor at uh, Investors Group and make sure that he gives us the T3s. Perfect. As he's doing that, he gets an investment report that shows that there were additional capital gains that we have to disclose, so we put that information into the package. Oh yeah, Ian, I forgot to give you my RRSP slip because again, that's with the investors advi investment advisor over at Investors Group, and I have to get him to give me that RRSP slip. Right? I mean, these are the conversations you have when you're first talking over things with the client. Childcare expenses? Oh, no, Ian, we spent less this year so you have all the uh, slips there for child care and oh yeah we forgot to put in uh, the uh, piano lessons for the little guy so uh, I'll send you over that receipt to claim the $500 arts amount simple but very effective if you don't have the comparative for last year then you're really behind the eight ball because you have nothing to compare to and you might miss a lot of information imagine if you didn't do the comparative in this case what would happen well, you would file the tax return and you'd think, hey, you know, I did a great job on Jason and Amanda's return. But what happens in the summer or in the fall, the CRA does a matching program and figures that they've missed all these slips and the client gets a reassessment for it. And that's not what you want. You want to make sure you have an accurate file before you e-file that return, before you file it with the CRA. And a very important first step, an extremely beneficial tool is the comparative to last year.